So coaches, we're going to start with two on one, but really it's going to end up two on two, but we're going to start out of steals. Different ways that we can steal the ball. And I think it's important that you teach players how to do this. Okay? It's part of the game, and it's where the savvy comes in. And I think in the past, oh, don't foul, don't foul. Well, if you played Turkey, Spain, Belarus, you never get a fast break because they foul you every time. A profile, we call it. Because they want you to attack five on five. And in North America, it was like, why would you foul? You know, you've got to get back, protect, and rotate. No, just foul. Solves the problem. No fast break. Start over. Same thing if you play Serbia and you drive middle. They just foul you. They don't have any rotations to solve that problem. They just foul you. Again, because they know if you, they drive middle, they can penetrate kick, penetrate dish. You're going to get a, an easy basket or a score, so they just foul you. Aren't you going to foul people out? No. They use a lot of players, and the players know, don't get beat middle. Don't get beat middle because you know you have to foul. Because if you don't foul, you're subbed. Because you get beat middle. So it's, it's a different philosophy, but it really impacts the game a lot. Okay, so we're going to start with this one first. You're going to start with the ball here dribbling in the swing spot. Somebody guard him. Another swing spot player over there. You're, you're going this way. Okay? There. You're just doing a dribble, but you're going to play what we call hand position. So just dribble, I'll demonstrate. Dribble. And all I'm going to start to do is time the rhythm of his bounce. Do you understand what I'm doing? And then you go behind and get it. Because that happens. All again, I just need one of these a game. Just need one of these. Time the rhythm. Now once he steals it, we're going that way. You're going to let him. You're just dribbling, and you're going to let him steal it first. Offense, defense. Play, play, play. Next four up. Let's go. Next four up. Let's go. Quick. Need a ball. Need a ball. Let's go. Here we go. Try to poke it forward. Here we go. Quick, quick, quick. Next four be ready to go. Time it. Time it. Play. Here we go. Next four. Next four, be ready. Guys, I wouldn't be sitting down now. Coaches, are they in the way if I, you want me to move them? Guys, go on the baseline. Go on the baseline so they can see. Next four, here we go. Okay, this time we're changing a little bit. Guard, corner. Match up. Guard up here with the ball. Pair in the corner. Same thing. He's driven with the left hand, and he's getting ready, because this is more realistic now. He's waiting up here, he's come down, and he's hesitating, just waiting for that wing entry. Does that happen in the game? He's just kind of, so I want you to back up. You're going to dribble up, and as he's waiting for the wing entry, you time it. Okay? Let me play. So you're coming up. Time it. Go. Play. Play. Here we go. Play, two on two, next four, here we go. Start with the guard, quick, 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 let's go, let's go. So it's just a way to start to play two on one or two on two, but that's a more realistic transition that you have to learn to play out of. Okay, here we go, start to dribble up as the guard. Had a little hesitation. Okay, now see how you tapped it? You tapped it, tap it that way. So same hand, just tap it, here we go, try to get. Time it, dribble, time it, time it. Okay? So you tap it up. Just. Okay. And stop. That's one. Same situation. Set it up quickly. Set it up, guys. Guard, wing, match up pair. No, too slow. Off. Too slow. Next four on. Let's go. I want people who want to play. Let's go. Okay? Guys, you better hustle on the floor. Don't waste time. Now, this time, we're going to go slow. He's coming down, and remember that in our I IPP work, you're going to try to beat him like our little IPP to the left. I'm going to be you. We're going to work on a stab. We're going to talk about a stab, a stunt, and a bluff. Okay, so a stab. First of all, this is a double gap, coaches. So I need to be in what we would call support. Support. I have to be 
almost half the distance so I can just touch it. I'm trying to fill up the double gap. You understand? If I'm down here and deny, that's too big a space, and I'm too late. So I've got to be up here in support. If he goes back door, I've got to have somebody else help. I can, I can, but I can't allow an easy pass here, and I've got to be ready to help in this. Now, as he starts to dribble, a stab is I'm actually going to go and attack the ball. Now, this is where, in a double gap, it's not a good idea to do it. It's mostly if he's coming up, start to raise up, and he turns it into a single gap. This is the best time to stab. And that would be one thing in Rick's where the guy runs behind. If he times it wrong, he's giving me license to go for a stab. See what I did? So we're, you're going to just dribble and let me try to take it. So here we go. He's coming. And again, I'm try all I'm trying to do is get my hand underneath his hand. Why? Because when it comes up, it's mine. I'm, not I'm just trying to get my hand under your hand. Okay? And it's amazing how many times it goes off a shin, and, but the refs don't call, and away you go. Okay, so let's try a stab. You're just dribbling into it. You kind of let him go, and then we're playing. Play. Here we go. Yep, that's it. That was good. Next four, let's go. Hustle in. Get another ball. Get another ball. Working on our stab. So we would stab in a single gap, not a double gap. Double gap, you're just, it's too easy for them to pitch. You raise up as he dribbles. Here comes the stab. Play, play, two on two. Next four, let's go, next four. Guys, they're off. Get off the court, get off the court. Now, you go to attack, you lift, and that's when you stab. Here we go. Oh, nice cob dribble. Nice cob dribble. Cut him off with a snake. Snake dribble or cob dribble. Here we go. Stab. And stop. Coach has got that one. That's a stab. Now let's set up in a double gap. I'll be you. Now we're going to work on a stunt. Over a little wider. On a stunt, he starts to drive. Go slow. I help over into the drive line. That's a stunt. I helped over. Now the key one on this is, I'm looking now on this hand. Go up like coach taught us. You see what I'm trying to do, coaches? I'm just trying to slow him down a little bit, but really it's on that pass out. So you've got to throw a lateral pass out, and I'm trying to get that steal. Again, I just get one of those a game, I get my layup. So we're stunting and recovering. You try to do that, you've got to throw a lateral pass. Okay? Here we go. Help over. Okay. Now, if he doesn't get it, we would play two on two. We'd play. Okay. Try it again. But normally, that's why you guys stay off, because they might play two and two here. Help over, but don't stay too long in the help over. That's it. Play. Here we go. Here we go. Stunt. Set it up. Let's go. You play against Serbia. You play against... Uh, Japan, you play against those, they're doing this all the time, from young ages. What we do have a tendency to say, well, we always just do this sort of thing, and therefore our players don't get used to when they see, see something do something different. They're not used to all these little tricks that people do because they're only used to practicing what you practice in your defense. Here we go, stunt. Uh, now, let's go again. You've got to help over, so you help over, and then recover back in the passing lane. Right? Here we go. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, see where he started? He started in sag. Anybody who teaches pack line, that's where he would start in this situation. Am I right? That's pack line defense. And the reason people say pack line, so you only have one movement out. We just find that pass shoot the three, or they force the close out and attack us. That's why we don't want that one, because it's just too good at passing and forcing you to close out. So we want you here, and again, you're going to, just as soon as that foot hits, recover back. Here we go. That's it. Good. Oh. And stop. Now, that was good. I'm going to show you, here's what we want to do once they steal. Let's go slow. Stunt, pass, and steal. Freeze. 
Somebody's got to try to protect the basket. He's dribbling. You're going to try to disrupt him by buzzing the ball. What was it? Dribble with your outside hand. What's a buzz? He's going to try to run behind and tip it forward. That's another disruptive thing he can do. As you're sprinting back, try to buzz the ball. You ever see that one? He's going to try to buzz it. You guys go live again. You just dribble. You, you're playing live, but if he can, he's going to try to buzz you. Here we go. Play, play, play. Play, 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 play. Buzz the ball. Buzz it, buzz it, buzz it, buzz it, buzz it. Uh -huh. Play, play, play. Come now. Oh, okay. Next four up. Okay, next one. Is that still working? No, there it goes. That's better. Next one. Big double gap. We're in the corner. I'll be you. We're going to bluff. We're going to bluff. So you're up on him. I'm way up in here. I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm helping. And as he starts to drive, I'm helping. But I just go right to him. There's no movement. I'm just faking like I'm a helper. Okay? It's very, very effective. If you know a team, they always come down, penetrate, kick, penetrate, kick, penetrate, kick. Just bluff. Just bluff. And they'll throw it right to you. Do you understand what you're doing? So you've got to make the pass, but you're a bluff. Pretend, but you've got to really, no, up in the passing line a little bit. So it really looks like you're helping. And you've got to say, I'm helping, I'm helping. Here we go. Help, 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 help. That's it. Play, two on two. Good circle action. Freeze, whoa, violation, you didn't cut. Gotta be transfer from this morning. If you pass, what do you do? Cut, no cut. Play, inbounding. Now, let's look at the inbounds. Turkey's playing Belarus. Turkey wins, they go on to the quarterfinals. They lose, they go home. They're down six, under boat. Three minutes to go. Three times in a row this happened. I'll be the guard for Turkey. Right up here. Let's say it's up just a bit. How many people just they just post up your, your guard to get the ball in? Anybody just, just post somebody up to get it? A lot of teams do that. Three times in a row. Here's what she did the first time. See on me. Make the pass. And she passed the outside hand. Normally what they will do is they'll pass as she's going away a little bit. So all they did was pass. And she ran, no, nope, past the outside hand, way out there. And she just ran behind, because she knew from the game what to do, pass, and she just ran out here, stole it, layup, down four. Okay? So she just anticipated from recognition that that's what they were going to do. Okay? Second time she did it. Now, again, this is under like four minutes. Second time. She knew that when this player caught the ball, they always pivot it to the middle. So seal me, catch it, and pivot to the middle. She just knew. She paid attention. Oh, she pivots to the middle. She pivots to the middle. And that's how clean she took it. She just took it that clean. And then the third time, you're, you're like really guessing now. You're like, re and you're guessing, aren't you? So this time when you sealed, it was this one. She just, she just I just called a half moon really lean on me and I really use this to spin so as you pass it I just spun I just spin off that and go okay so since it's an inbounds you're gonna to try to do one of those three things you're not throwing the best pass okay you gotta to pivot to the middle if you catch it try to spin and go on it. ah okay and now you play 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 go this way play play Play, go. Whoa, freeze, freeze. No, he's got a seal to get it in. So we're working on our steal again. Inbound it, seal. You got to seal somebody. Try one of those things now. Whoa, whoa, freeze, freeze. That's right. Get where you can. Either cheat behind it, spin across the top, or go from the pivot. There we go. That's it, good. Play, play this way, play this way. And stop. Now, 
This is the same as defending a post up, right? Come in here and post up on me. Here's the other thing that they're real good at doing. No, you guard, you guard uh, him. You, you post up. No, you, you, you're in uh, defense because you did this very well. What a lot of people are real good, take the ball in the wing. Let me be you just for a second. You post up. Is what they're really good at on defense is they don't do this. Why? Because they also don't want you to know how long my arms are. Right? I'm not going to tell you how long my arms are. And they just go like this. And I'll, actually, they're probably doing this. Can you see what I'm doing? They're probably like grabbing as long as they know where the referee is, but they'll, they'll do that. And then they'll pull you and do this if they'll let you. Okay? Well, that's dirty basketball. But what I'm doing is I'm not showing the length of my arms because I'm hoping when he passes it, he's throwing it in there somewhere. If I do this, then he knows, oh, I know exactly how long your arms are. Try it. You seal it. And spin off the... Now, now you've got to get where... See, you want to get where you can spin through this. You can't spin through that, but you can spin off this. And just lean in there and we're ready to go. That's it. Okay? Now, the other one is, if, if you know that you can't get over the top is, I really have to be quick to go and get it here and really try to get it there. Okay, try that one. Oh, oh, no, no, you're too far over the top. Be more here, and again, just this one you do kind of put, you put your hand up on this one, why? Because you want them to really throw it out there, but you know you're going behind. That's it. Now all you got to get is a tip. Play from this one right here. Play, and we're playing two on two that way. Here we go. Back up, back up. Yep. Play two on two. Good pivot. Play, play, play. Transition. Give it up, give it up. Too many dribbles. Okay, we're going back. Which was the first one we're working on? The bluff. Set up a bluff for me. Guard, quickly. Guard, corner, bluff. Quick, quick, quick. No, too slow. Let's go. Next four in. Next four. Need a ball, guys. Let's go. Too slow. You're burning daylight. Now freeze. Corner. In the corner. Now you're in bluff. What was bluff? You're up in here. Up in here. And you're saying, help, help, help. But then you just run right at him when he dribbles. Back up just a bit. Lots of talk. Lots of talk. Oh, freeze. Now, guys, what was that? Was that a stunt, a stab, or a bluff? That was a stab, because he went at the ball. A stunt, a stab, a bluff. Go again. You just go right to him. You pretend you're helping, and then go right to him. Bluff. Whoa, whoa, freeze. Go in the passing lane. What's that? Try to get the ball. We want the ball. We got, we got DeAndre Jordan in there. DeAndre is going to clean up all back doors. He's got that covered. You, you want to pressure that ball. Here we go. Play, play, play. Buzz it, buzz it. Now, see, we would also be working on how we want to transition. When we get a two-on-one, we like to run alleys. Get alleys. Okay, sideline inbounds for this next group. Four guys, sideline inbounds. Now we're working on the steal off the inbounds, on the seal. You, you, why don't we switch? I just think we should switch. That would make good sense. Okay, now. Okay. Which one are you going to try to do? No, but, but be careful if you're doing this too. Sometimes you've got to fake it like you're ready. You want him to lean into you. You want to use his to, like a pivot. Okay. There you go. Oh, oh, freeze, freeze. Now, keep going. You could have kept going. Go for it. Make that one more step. You throw up really high. That's it. Got the tip. Good. Here we go. That's okay. Play from right there. Now, you've got to do the same thing back. You're inbounding. Blue's inbounding. Going. They're going that way, right? Okay. You've got to work for your steal here now. And stop. Now, come back again. Here's another disruptive thing that teams do. Okay? At the last second, as soon as he gets 1,001, I want you to turn and face guard him. 
Does the rules say you have to guard him? Okay. Ready? So I'll be the referee. So again, mix up how you guard inbounds. It can be very disruptive. 1,001, 1,000. Now find it. Oh, freeze, freeze. Too slow. Okay, freeze. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, good steal there. Good steal. You want to time it. Because what will usually happen, especially if there's some kind of screen action, as soon as they hand it to the person, there's a screen, and then if you time it just right, you, you just take away the position of the cutter. Give me another pair right here, offense, defense, quickly. This is the other big thing that people are doing. Let's move the inbounds down here, guys. Move the inbounds down here. I call it a dibs. Okay? Defensive inbounder switch. This is a big thing that a lot of countries are doing now to disrupt. You're guarding here. Start with a down in their offense, down screen to get your partner open. You're going to go down screen. Down screen, good. You're coming off the screen. Now, here's what the teams are doing. You take him. And you run right to him. Okay? So, and again, you've got to be sneaky. You're kind of you're like this. You're like, and then boom. And it's amazing how many times they throw it right to you. Okay, so we're on a dibs. Defender, inbound switch. Here we go. Yeah, go, 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 go. Oh. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing on the baseline. Set it up inbounding. We're scoring at this basket. So you're scoring here. Give me a pin screen right here by the pinny. And you're going to bring a cross screen. You're coming out to get the ball. Now, here's what, ah, here's what we're doing, though. You take him, and you switch to the inbounder. So you be ready, though. You be ready to be sneaky. You're kind of in here, and so you can be like this, and then you really sheet out there. Ready? Here we go. Switch the inbounder. Okay, play. Three on three. Oh, good stunt. Good stunt. Yes. Yes. Right through. Yes. So he ran through the pivot. Oh, nice pass. Nice diagonal pass. Play, play, play. Yes, good buzz. Okay, and free. And that's what a lot of the European teams are doing. Australia will do that too. They will actually run up at the guard. They just, they just run right at you. And they try to get the poke steal. And if you don't get the poke steal, they close you on you. And then they put their hand up. Yeah, I foul. But what they're trying to get first is what? Try to get a steal. Hey, two points. They don't? Oh, I close line. Oh, that's a foul. Now, I think you're going to see them change that rule. I think they, ha they have to. Because at the Olympics, it was just foul after foul anytime it was a fast break. It's kind of like the, uh, the trap in hockey, right? They had to change the rule because it was just ruining the game as far as, because that's what's happening. There's, just, there's no fast breaks when you play internationally against the European teams. Okay? And they're just so good at it. Okay? Now, it's not clear path because they know that as the safety's coming up, somebody just runs behind the ball, so it's never a clear path foul. Okay? But they, they try for that steal just like you do. They run right up and they poke at it, and then they foul. Okay? So let's come back down here. Okay, give me three on three. Three on three. White's on defense, Penny's on offense. Let's look at a shot block to disrupt. Shot block. Okay, so be the post, and you be offensive post over there. Wing player over here. Guard. Ball. We need the ball here. Now, we're going to go slow. We're going to drive right down through here, and we're going to pretend this guy is the best three-point shooter in the country. So you're bluffing. You understand what I mean? You're not, you're just pretending, but you are not helping off the ball side wing. That's just suicide. You beat your guy and you're going to the rim. He's late to take the charge. So we now have to equip him on how to block a shot. I teach this to my girls. I taught this to them when they were 12 years old. How to block shots. But how to contest shots without fouling is more important way to say it. Which arm should I use to contest? So. Let me be you at first. Here he comes. He's coming down. Now walk. Just walk with the ball. I'm an old man. Which hand do you think I have to block this with, guys? My right hand. Why? Why can't I block with this one? 
What's the other thing's going to happen if I tip the ball? Go in front. What happens if I block with this hand? Where's the ball stay? It stays in bounds. What happens if I block with this one? It goes out of bounds, and I'm crossing my body. And I'm not, this is the one, you learn this, guys. Even the little guys. If you learn this, you'll block a lot of shots. I'm not blocking the ball. I'm blocking the spot that the ball must go through to get to the basket. I'm putting my hand in a spot where the ball must pass through. And that's why I was teaching about the smile. Most girls, especially, take off inside the smile. There is only one possible spot that that ball can go through to get there. It's got to go through there. And all I got to do is get my hand there. And he's actually underneath me. And I'm trying to just tip it back this way. Okay? That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to block the ball. I'm not reaching over here. I'm trying to block a spot and just tip it with my hand. The good people actually catch it. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this to start. Start out here. You're going to walk in and just hold the ball up high and at the last second just flip it. So dribble in and now just walk with the ball above your head. And then at the last second. So I'm coming over and just flip it from there. And then I'm tipping it as it goes in. But I want you to do this. So all I'm going to do is this on offense. I'm dribbling in. I'm just going to hold it. And I'm just going to go like that. And you've got to block it. And then we play. Question. Well, what we're doing right now is we're pretending that he's a Canadian guard. He's a guard who plays in Canada who's out of control. Do we ever see people who play like this on offense? I see, look, I see it all the time. It's the guy who has no positioning with his head. He's driving too fast. The guard who comes in here and does this one on you, you're in trouble. Because he's just like, yeah, what are you going to do? But the guy who's doing this, you guys should be like, gone. Let's go slow. Here we go. That's it. Play, play, play. So with, with my little girls, I'll show you what I do with the little girls. Okay, next six up. Let's go. Quick, quick, quick. Ball right here. Who's the shot blocker? I'm about to say too slow, we'll sub you out. Now, with the little girls, this is all I do. You're my partner. You're going to pretend you're the help defender on the other side of the smile. Because if you were there, you'd take the charge. I'm going to walk, just walk in with the ball. You're going to time it and jump and block that. That's it, all you're doing. Try to take off two feet if you can. You do that for me. So I'm in here, I'm helping. Give him the ball. He's walking in. Hold it above your head. And, and then he's walking in, and I'm coming, and I'm just jumping and tipping the ball here. That's how I teach it with the little girls. Okay? If he comes on the other side, cross over and attack that way on me. So he's coming down, and I'm going to help, and he starts to go this way. Which hand on this side, guys? Left hand. And I jump, and I tip it with my left hand. Comes straight at me. He comes straight at me. He puts his back to me. This is a big move now for a lot of pros. Put your back to me. Keep your dribble. And then he's going to show one side or the other. Show this side to shoot. Which hand? Right hand. Spin back to shoot the other hand. Left. So I'm learning which hand to contest with without crossing my body to foul. Okay? You're going to go more game speed this time. So we're playing a little more game speed. You're the shot blocker. Here we go. You're going to score. Just go for your layup. Okay, now, we're going to let you get beat clean. You get beat clean. Okay, let's go again. You're just going to do a, a layup inside the smile. You're trying to block it. Here we go. That's it. And then we play. Let's go again. Now, what happens is, and he, he kind of did it too. See how you were getting your chest in front. Start to drive. If I get my chest in front, what am I going to do? I'm taking the charge. This is when I'm late to the party. Okay, I'm late. I can't get in front. So go, and I'm actually almost letting him get a little past me, and he's actually under me. That's where I want to block it. But if I get my chest in front, take the charge. You go a little faster. But get into the smile to shoot. Here we go. Okay, play, play, play. 
Next six up, here we go. Buzz it, buzz it. Who's the shot blocker? Right there. Now remember, you're controlled, you're controlled. Uh oh. Here we go. We're just going down for now, guys. Just going down. You get up and he's beat you. You're up here. Ready? Here we go. Go. Sit. Play. Play. Heads up. Heads up. Okay, freeze, freeze, freeze. Now, hold it, hold it. This is where we try to start to help them put it together. Good job on the ball. Who is pushing pressure on the ball? Right up here. Best disruptive defense there is, ball pressure. Up here, ball pressure again. This is where team decision making, if you have the little gold medal profile I gave you yesterday, there's a section under basketball that says team decision making. Who am I? Who am I guarding? Who's my teammate? Who's he guarding? Can he beat him one-on-one -on, -one on the dribble? Let's say you say no. He is a great ball pressure. He's making him zigzag. He wants to pass. Would you agree? If you're being guarded by a great ball defender, you don't want to dribble against him, do you? You want to pass. So should you be in sag or should you be out more in passing lines? You don't know his passing lines. That's right. Because you, you want him to pass. You just are hoping. And this is the other thing we do. We can play deny. Let me show you. I can be in deny. Eyes and ears. Or I can be in deceive. Deceive is I'm not playing defense. And what am I hoping you do? Pass. And then I can steal. Deny, deceive. I'm really not engaged. I don't even like to play basketball. But I'm really hoping you pass it. Okay? So Start to know who your teammates are. Should I be up and passing line, or is he going to need more help? Then I've got to be thinking, am I going to stunt, or am I going to stab or bluff? Does that make sense? You've got to be thinking about helping out at the back end. Play from here. Okay, yep, keep playing. Freeze, freeze, freeze. He's in trouble. Deny that. He wasn't beating him. Get out here. Deny that. Play. Play. There's a shot block. And stop. Good job. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple that amazed me this year. Uh, give me a guard out here. Blue, or one called guard, corner, post. Okay. Uh, you go in the. I need an offense, defense, guys. Offense, defense. Match up. Sue Bird, not a bad player. Diana Taurasi, not a bad player. How many times in Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird's career have they made a guard to wing entry pass? They played together at, what, three years at uh, UConn? They played together in all those Olympics. They probably made a few passes. Would you agree? Gino is standing right here, coach at UConn. He's standing right here, watching this. I'll be you. This is the guard. It's a mismatch. She's the tiniest guard on Serbia. This is Tarasi. Tarasi says, I'm going to get this ball, and I'm just going to take you on. So she runs out on the blast cut. Where have you been taught to pass the ball on the blast cut? Where do you show your target hand? Is that what you teach coaches? Pass the outside? Why? Because you pass inside, I'm going to steal it. You just run that, you pass to the outside. Where you go, ready, here we go, cut. Pass the outside. No, you gotta go shorten your pass, because she came up through here, and she picked it clean. Gino's standing right there, he could have tripped her, and she went in for a layup, and he's standing there like, and Bird and Trossy just stood and went, I'd never seen that before. Never seen it before. But she did it one time, and it was a perfect time to do it, okay? Try that. Pass the outside. You just go up the out behind her to steal it. Now you start it. Got to start in close and tail her, just a little bit, just there. Here we go. The tail him. Here we go. Pass the outside. See, she's late. I mean, you got to you got to commit to that. Now again, am I saying you teach that? No, I'm not saying that.
what I'm saying, there's times in the game sometimes where you've got to allow players to have a little creativity on defense. Okay. Here's another one that we see a lot. Uh, give me a, a pair, high post pair, right there. Another high post pair here, offense, defense, high post pair. You two stay there and give me an offense pair over there, offense, defense. Iverson cut or scrape cut. High post pair here, right here, offense, defense, right here. Offense, defense. Okay. An Iverson cut or a scrape cut. You're there, turn and face, you be up in the top. You're coming across the top, you're coming out the bottom. You're going off two screens, no, set two screens right here. There's the first screen, here's the second screen. How many people have seen an Iverson cut? It's all the rage. It's again, it's a positional action. It's an action to get the ball in a position to set something up. Okay? Well, here's how certain teams will defend that. Come on over here. To disrupt it. What Serbia did, I've already showed you, is I just, they just did this on it. Go ahead, cut. That's all they did. They just top-locked it. And again, there's no back door because there's great ball pressure here. You get, they just top-locked it. Another thing people do is this. Start to run your Iverson. You switch out on it. Here he comes. Jump out and take the charge. Boom! And you just run to him. So if, you're, if you rely on screening, one of the most disruptive things is switching. If you don't take into account switches, you'll just nullify your... You get all these wonderful screens, but they'll just switch it. Okay? And then you, you wasted all this time and you got no advantage. So you have to take into account switching if you're counting on screens. Here's what Penny Taylor did for Australia. Uh, go back over here. I'll be you. Again, you got to pass the outside. When you catch it, you need to pivot to the baseline. So you start to go. No, she's coming. He's, he's Iverson. And then she, again, she did this pass. And she, no. They know on this cut, most teams will do this. Most players do this, and that's what they do. And all Penny Taylor was, she just said, I know what you're doing. Go ahead. And on that pass, she just went bang and took the ball. Because, again, through scouting, through repetition, I know what you're going to do. Okay? And I think you can help players with those little things. Again, I'm not saying you teach all this stuff. But I'm saying you can find little things to be a little more disruptive instead of we always defend this way. Because you're trying to create some turnovers that lead to some easy baskets. Okay. Have a seat, guys. Now, I purposely got 20 minutes here. And I'm going to jokingly say this. Any question you ask now is free of charge. Any question at the end is going to cost you a thousand bucks. How's that? Because I want questions. I, this is your chance to ask me a question. All right? This is the chance. And that's where you learn. And I want you to challenge me. Mike, that was a terrible, that was stupid, that never would work. I don't mind that. I'm, I love those kind of debates. But ask some good questions. I know you've got one. Ask your question. Adam will bring up so everybody can hear. That will make it easier. Guys, you'll be ready in a moment's notice. I'm going to call you out to show something. So you guys got to pay attention. Here, here, this was one of the best things I've seen against top lock. Come on, guys, quick, give me, give me wing player. You top lock him on deep. No, sorry, you're, you're, uh, you top lock him. You guard me. Ball, please. Everybody else off. Just two on two. WNBA, Minnesota Lynx, top lock, top lock her. So him, you're going to try to cut it, right? You're trying to cut it, you just top lock him. But be in a little bit more. This, no, top lock is you just guard his belly button, put your back to me. Guard his belly button. Okay, start to cut. No, cut more in there. Take him in, take him in. Top lock, take him in. And I just use this as a double screen. Because he didn't even know he didn't even know there was a pick coming, right? He's the one who's supposed to call pick. 
He's the one that's supposed to hedge or, or flat hedge. Or, so it's, it was just a double pick. Now, can you call that as a play? Well, no, because they got obliged by top locking. But I think it's a concept that you could use. That, hey, for the top lock, let's just, just run it as a dribble handoff or a pick. Okay? Because it's, it's really, it's, it, but it's the creativity of that, that in the spontaneous moment. That was one of the best things I've seen. Love it. Because it mixes it up. 2012 in the, against France. So his question was, what about blitzing or trapping? In 2012, we were playing France. France is our nemesis on the women's side. They, they beat us in the 2012 and made us end up playing the U.S. in the quarterfinals, and we lost by five. So uh, France is a team we're going to look after here. So we were running ball screen against them late in the shot clock, and Shona was having a great success shooting pull-ups. Late, right? We had nothing. Remember Kirby said end game? We were running ball screen with our big bang. Shona made a couple shots. Yeah, we're ready in the game. Under two minutes, they shocked every one of them, and we got no shot. Just, and that was the only time they did it. They disrupted us because we were anticipating, and it wasn't there. So if you do it all the time, if that's all you do, I guarantee you over the course of the game or the course of the season, people will adapt to it. They will. You cannot guard ball screen one way. If you say you only guard it one way, you just haven't played against enough good teams yet because there's always a way to counter how you're defending it. And the more, we play with our, our age group teams about six ways. It sounds like a lot, but it's really the aunt not. When you put in switching, shocking, high hedge, flat hedge, downing, and there's one other easy one, under. That's the six ways we're defending it. And it helps us on offense to get better too, because we now have to learn how. Do we master any of them? No. If you remember my sheet, fluency, we have knowledge, understanding, and can apply it. We're not masters of it. But by the time they get to seniors, we hope they are masters of it. But if we say we only are going to shock ball screens with the young kids, I don't think it grows their creativity and their experience with the game. Okay? But it's great to mix it up. Great to mix it up. Yes, defensive jabs, right here. You guys can sit down. So to me, if, he, if I ever get a sense of he's just hesitating and he's looking through me, everybody understand what it means to look through me? What are you looking for when you look through me? You, you know, you're trying to see the cross screen or so dribble, and he's looking through me. I just want to, I got to get his eyes back on me. I got to get his eyes off of the pass. And there's that little jab. I'm not a lunge. It's just that little jab. Right? Just those little defensive jabs. Oh, if, 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 if with this hand. Yeah, if, if he's putting it out there a lot, yeah, I could do that. The only problem I have with that one, if I miss it, I'm in a, in a, a really tough hip turn situation. But I think once I commit, run through the ball. Like what happens, a lot of people, they won't commit. But if I make a commitment, run through it. And just keep, you'll get a tip, you can get a little piece of it, that's all. Don't be afraid to run through it. I don't worry about fouls as much as people. I, I, I don't think, I think fouls are, there's good fouls and there's bad fouls. If they call one foul, but I get five steals, I'm taking five steals. I'm taking five steals. And, okay, you sub in. But in the old days when I only played five players, my five players and you're my bench, and you only go in if these guys don't play well. The game's changed. There's Temple. We need easy baskets. I want good fouls. I don't want a bad foul on a bad steal, where it was like, that was just, like, what are you doing? Like, you're just, but it, hey, that's okay. Now, maybe the next time you can't do that because you've used your one. You've tried it and you don't have it. But the benefit of getting the layup is worth that. Now, if we're always fouling, that's a different story. Okay? And I'm not advising to run out of control. It's know when you can get that good opportunity to try to make that little tip or that steal. Okay? Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just the little drills I'm showing. Give me the two tall guys here. Two tall guys. 
and you're going to dribble in. Okay? Post, help. All you're going in is for a layup. Okay? Outside the block chart, uh, you're, out, you're posting there. Again, let them go under. Here we go. Drive hard and score your layup. Just go for the layup. Okay? Now, again, do not jump until he jumps. You're driving in right to here. You've got to get in the small to shoot a layup. Okay. Don't worry. No one's going to see this. No one will see this. You want to you know, don't jump till he jumps. It's like a, it's, you're just going to sit there, wait, wait, and then go when he goes. And you're blocking a spot. No, no. See, right now he just passed to him. You're guarding him. Here we go. Go late to the party. Now, see, see again, see how he's getting his chest in there? He's not going to shoot that. He's, you're too early. You do it. Let me be you. I'm bluffing. Go, go. Go for your layup. That's where I'm going. I'm going late, but I'm blocking up there. Right? I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about the spot for the ball. But go late. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Now go. Shoot your layup. Go again. Shoot your layup. Shoot a normal. Don't even think there's no one there. Just go score a layup. Go score your layup. Okay? Another drill is this. Let me go with him. I'll guard him because I can block him. Okay. Come straight down. Come straight down. I'm helping. Go for your layup. Uh -uh. Which hand are you going to dribble? Left hand dribble. Left hand dribble. I take the charge. Spin dribble. Go for something on that side. And then I'm going to go in with this hand. So I'm now learning how to take the charge, but he changed direction. Go with the other hand. You're doing that one. Come straight down, then change direction. You just step up for a second. Here we go. Take the charge. Spin. Okay? So he's working on understanding which hand, if I can take the charge, take the charge, but then he gets a, a little slight advantage, how to use with my hands up. I think that's preventing from fouling, but we got a chance for the block. Just one little tip, though. Let me be you. I'm driving in. I need to have to learn how to extend, and I have to put a hand up to protect. Right? So I come from the shot block. I can't push him, right? That's a foul. But do I put my hand like this or like this? Guys, what do you think? Do I put my palm to him or my back of my hand? Don't wouldn't I just put do it like this? Does that make sense? No. Push on my arm. The push on my arm. Push. Push against my arm. Push try to push. Okay, let's go again. Push against my arm. Is there a difference? Look, just by doing that, I'm ten times stronger. Right? So I don't... i got to go up and protect. Okay? Those are little things that we can help players with to understand how to be stronger. Okay? So that's, that's the progression I would use for shot block. But you can see they want to get their chest in front. Well, if your chest is in front, take the charge. It's when you're late to the party and learning to block the spot. And when they get it, it is amazing. The best shot blocker I ever coached in high school was my smallest guard because she just could time it. And she'd just sucker these people in to go for layups and then she'd just go boom, block the spot because she knew they'd all shoot it right around the basket. They'd shoot the ball straight up. So you didn't really have to jump that high just to block that spot. When people start learning to extend, it's more difficult. Yeah. Say that again. Well, remember, if, if you're getting penetrated on, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. So, so to me, the shot block is cleaning up the rim, and it's forcing a bad shot. And one of the problems I, I think we have is, and we're seeing it already from him, it's not so much the shot block, it's the bad shot he takes because he's avoiding the shot block. The best thing he could do is miss the shot to the other side. Why? He's got the dunk. But you know what? His emotional brain is taking over and he's feeling pressured. He's fe so he's really, he starts to do this one. And know where he misses most of the time? This side. Right? The best thing he can do 
is miss to the other side. And don't be afraid to miss. Uh, in the London Olympics, I was watching Australia play, and they have the big, big post, Cambich, and the head of Harrower was the guard. And I kept saying, man, she misses a lot of layups. She's want to get her out of there. But then I started watching her, like, yeah, but Cambich makes all the putbacks. And then I'm like, she's doing that on purpose. It should have been counted as an assist, but they were counting them as missed shots. But you know what? Those were all assists because she purposely would miss so the ball would bounce out to the other side. Okay? So I think the shot block, it's more the psychological factor. The, the other thing is we've got to try to get that guy out of there, but that's tough. It, it's like if you're getting penetration, you're, you're, it's two on one. You're in trouble. So to me, try to shot block it or to make a bad shot is your best bet because they're just going to tear you apart with anything else. Yeah, you can try to rotate somebody in there, but it's tough. It's tough. So I know I didn't say about blocking that person out, but it's really the psychological factor of intimidating a bad shot is really more important. Oh. Well, what, what, what teams are good at, if you always do the same thing, I can anticipate on defense. So let's say you always go outlet and you always pass to him on an outlet. So the shot went up, he's got three. This is what teams do is they take their short safety and they just jam this guy, first person. That's who they're jamming the most. They're basically running up and denying this person. Or on the first catch, catch, is they're making, they're just, <clears throat> and they're making him go sideways. That's who the most disruptive jam is if you always outlet to your guard. Just jam that person, just deny that person. When the shot goes up, just find that person if they always go to the guard. Jam on a big, let him have it. Do you know what it means to jam? When he gets the rebound, if you force him to dribble, just dribble out to a corner. Dribble, yeah, that's especially teams that are doing breakout dribbles. Does everybody understand what a breakout dribble is? Or they just, like Rick showed us that yesterday. But if you can jam a breakout dribble and force them to dribble to a side, that is huge disruption. Because now the guard probably has to cut way back down here. Now we're looking at four, three on the count to get over half. So I would say jam the outlet person but if the guard dribbles by def or the breakout dribble, I'm definitely jamming that. We played Senegal, and Af I mean, they, that's what they did really well against us. They took away a lot of our fast breaks because they, they just ran with our breakout dribbles. They're very good at that. But the teams that just run back, yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not disrupting anything. Good question. Adam. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, what did I say he had to do? There was one rule I told you when you pivoted on offense that you had to do with the ball. Where did it have to be when you ended up facing the basket? You had to be, tell him, turn the way you normally want to turn. Turn to the middle and go to shoot the way you want to turn. See, that forces me troubles. But if I know through scouting, turn with the ball low to shoot, turn this way to shoot. See, I'm just, it's just a low hand block. Here's a, here's a secret from NBA players, though. Um, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Now, I'm just going to do this. I'm not assaulting you. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do you, hear, do you hear this one? No. Do you hear this one? Yeah. Good players chop the ball. They don't slap the ball. Because look, Rick said it this morning, right? A lot of time, or I think it was last night we were talking with the girls. Referees call sometimes what they hear or they think. But if they don't hear it sometimes, they're not going to call it. Okay, so a lot of people just, they chop it. But it's that low hand block. 
Okay? So I want you to turn low with it to shoot. Most right-hand players are going to turn over which shoulder? My shoulder. If I'm, a, if I'm guarding him, which way, guys, is he most likely going to turn to shoot if he's right-handed? To my left side. So I know that I'm looking to low-hand block with this hand. So as he turns, I'm, I'm chopping with this hand. Because I know, I'm anticipating that he wants to turn low with that hand. And if he has the ball down, I'm right in here with my low hand. Just a low hand block. Same thing on a dribble to a shot. He's a tall guy, so he, and his coach said, you just dribble jump shot and shoot up over top of him. Dribble down here to shoot your jump shot. All I'm doing is I'm putting my low hand block right in here. I'm just putting my low hand block in here. So as he dribbles, I just know where he wants to pick it up. I'm just putting a hand right in here. Okay, that's just called a low hand block. Yeah, I'm going to get called for one of those a game. But I'll take that risk if I can get four steals out of it. If they're calling it, I've got to back off. Okay. Hey, Coach, uh, you were referencing the Audrey Jordan a lot today. Um, just looking at the analytical side, uh, Hassan Whiteside is the guy that always comes up, pushed off blocking as yep. well as the Audrey Jordan. Uh, but his efficiency on the defensive side has been uh, lacking when he goes to the advanced set the analytics. Yep. You've got to be careful with some of the analytics because um, I'd have to know exactly what analytics you're talking about, what number. Like, I need to know what, nu what, what number, which one are they talking about? Uh, the well, see, a lot of that also has to do with the team, he's pl the team you play on, too, right? Because it's, if the other team scores and you're on the floor, it's going to impact you. So it's, sometimes the numbers is not just based on you, it's based on the whole team. That's, that's why, again, I can't really answer that completely until I know the whole numbers, okay? Because stats, I got to know what the exact stat is and how they calculated it. But a lot of times it's just because, like I say, if I'm on a, on a team that the other team scores a lot of points, yeah, my defensive fishing looks pretty bad from an individual point of view. But yet I may be great, okay? It's just because the rest of my teammates are allowing a lot of field goals when that's happening, okay? Um, it's, it's a tricky one with stats. stats. Stats are good, but you also got to understand why, where they're coming from, and what has actually been measured. So, like, the, the, the big stat one tells you, don't shoot pull-ups. Everybody hear that one? Uh, pull-ups are going away from the game. They're terrible. No one should shoot. Like, Houston Rockets, don't shoot pull-ups. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the best players in the game can make pull-ups. USA women, they are the best pull-up jump shooting team, in, I think, in any basketball, men or women. Tarasi, Maya Moore, Simone Augustus. That's what makes them special is they got pull-ups and no one else does because they just jump up over top and shoot a pull-up. Okay? Yeah, they're, they're, they're good shots. Okay? Is it the first shot we want? No. But if you show you can make it, a pull-up is still a good shot. Okay? So is it, is it between taking a bad three and a pull-up? I'm taking the pull-up. I think what you see now is there's too many bad threes. Way too many bad threes. And we just, oh, that was a good, that was a three. Oh, good shot, good try. No, that was a bad shot. Okay? Well, the analytics tell us we want threes. Well, not those ones. Okay? No, I, I don't think, I think we know from studying thousands and thousands of games the highest percentage shot is what? A right hand layup. So points per possession, you can probably at a, at a high level shoot probably like, well, you're going to score about 1.75 to 1.8 points per possession if you at the rim. Does that make sense? You're, you're going to get pretty good. You're not going to get two because somebody's going to miss a few layups in transition. The next thing is your th open threes by good three-point shooters because you just have to make one every three shots and you're still getting, you know, pretty good percentage. So you're probably around about 1.7 points per possession on three, open threes, a good shooting team. The next one is a foul shot. You're probably about 1.7, you know, if you shoot 70%, you're about 1.7 points on a foul shot. Well, then it's a pull-up, but a pull-up's down around about 1.1, 1.2, which is not bad, still more than a point of possession, but that's where it comes from. It doesn't say it's a bad shot, it's just on a points per position over time, because it's a harder shot. It's a little harder shot. The three is a harder shot, but you get rewarded more for making them. That's why it's just higher on the points per possession. 
Okay? But yes, nowadays I think it's because people don't teach it. Floaters I'm not convinced about. I'm not convinced that floaters are the solution to all our problems. Because I think, again, it promotes, really, it's, I'm out of control and I can't stop, oh, I'll just shoot my floater. Okay? I think it's the last thing you, you advance to is the floater. But mid-range shots are still a, a big part of the game of basketball, especially when you're playing against zones and things like that. It's just, if you come down and take mid-range every time, you're probably not going to get a high enough percentage. Okay? Again, I'm going to thank you for coaching, and I thank you for uh, allowing me to just share some ideas. Anything I can ever do to help you in basketball, I will try to do that. Uh, time isn't my only issue. I'm, I'm very busy, but uh, my, my website, I don't have a website, but Canada Basketball, but uh, Mike McKay at basketball.ca. I don't give my phone number out because there's no sense phoning me because I never answer my phone. I just, just don't. But, and on Twitter, I think it's McKay, MJ, Michael, or something like that. You know, so something like that. So... Uh, well, I never tweet myself, so I don't know. It's just on there. I think it's McKay, MJ, Michael. I think that's what it is. That sounds right. Uh, but again, anything I can ever do to help, I'm uh, more than willing to help because, look, I'm very passionate about what we do in Canada, and I know on the women's side we're going to win a medal in 2020, and it's going to be because of people like you have worked with players. And the exciting thing is there's probably a couple players coming out of Manitoba that have a real good shot of playing for us in the Olympics. Okay, and it's because people here have worked with players, right? And I think the same is on the men. The men, it's a different situation on the men because it's tough to qualify the way they have qualified. But our men are young, and they're going to do they're going to do some things, okay? But it's again, it's because people in Canada we do a good job with our players at the developmental age, and it's people like you doing that. So again, thank you for coaching.